first giving honor to God who's ahead of my life. And I just wanted to uh step into this real quick and uh just thank you all for coming to Juniper Church uh for our coffee and conversation. Um today's uh service is not going to be too long. I wanna try to get to the word real fast uh before we get started. Uh I um want to thank again all those who have been participating and uh who have been sharing videos who have been giving uh different things out uh that i've said and um i would like to thank you for that um those who have participated in the uh food ministry we thank you for that um i want to make sure that i do touch base on those things um i don't want to um again hold you a long time this is not going to be the longest uh, sermon i've ever given uh because i want to be real clear that um my heart is heavy my heart is a uh, very um just hurt and and i've been kind of like stressed so i've had to kind of like take a break from social media a little bit uh, so I won't be doing too much uh, commenting uh, to all the churches who have uh, opened your doors today. Um, I would like to God, say God bless you. And um, on this beautiful Sunday, it's a beautiful Sunday, it's, it's May 31st, uh, 2020. And it's sunny as, as all get out in Cleveland. I, I've never seen such a beautiful day. So if you've had a chance to open your your doors this Sunday morning and you, to those who have been able to go into the church house for the first time, God bless you. God bless you. Um, we have had a lot of different things that has uh, happened over the course of this week. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to, uh, act like I know everything, uh, I'm trying to remember the guy in Minnesota. What's his name? Um, and forgive me if I don't remember his name. Um, he was murdered um, in the street uh, by a police officer. Um, and I'm going to look it up. Um, and I don't remember uh, what his name is. Uh, but George Floyd, that's his name, George Floyd. Um, I'm sorry if I don't remember names. Well, I'm terrible with names, so please charge it to my head, not my heart. Um, he uh, was murdered in the street by a police officer. Those police officers have since been charged. And uh, you've seen the reaction throughout the week uh, from different parts of our community. And uh, you've seen the different um, reactions from different communities and um, I don't want to uh, turn this into the you know George Floyd uh, um, Memorial Hour I don't want to do that because uh, I don't know the gentleman I never met him a day in my life I don't know his personality I don't know who he was but I know one thing he was an African-American male I know that he was killed by the police officer and, and, and it was no reason and I don't care what anyone says, there's no reason why that man put his neck, his his knee on that man's neck. And when that man said, I couldn't breathe in, and you don't listen, and then you got somebody holding you down by the legs. If you got somebody holding him by the legs, then there's no need for you to be putting your your weight on his back. You could have killed him, just put it in on his back. Too much pressure on the back, and you too much pressure from someone else's body on the back, you would stop that person from breathing, and that could ultimately take their life and it did and you know whether some choose to believe is racially motivated or not uh remains to be seen i'm not going to get into the uh to the political side of it but i will say you'd be kind of a fool not to believe that it was racial that it wasn't racially motivated um i don't know how you could come to such a conclusion after witnessing that video and uh really the the, the climate that we live in um, people may not like it people may not enjoy it um, but it is the truth and I'm here to tell you that I don't care whether people like it or not I don't care if people believe it or not um, the truth is the truth and you you can just take it however you like it 
Um, there is a thing as such thing as systemic racism. There's a such thing as systemic racism in this country. We cannot, you know, I I I often say to my conservative uh, brothers and sisters, just because you're conservative doesn't give you a license to close your eyes. You know, just because you're conservative doesn't mean that you have to act as if things don't exist. And we can still live the truth. You know, if we truly believe in Christ, then the just will live by faith through Christ. Yeah, man, you sh you you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You are living the standard of Christ, and tr Christ lived truthfully. Okay, uh, if if racism and 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 those things existed when He was around, uh, then obviously it will exist today. And whether you like it or not, there are some police officers who have racial bias. It may not be every police officer. But there is a high number of them and it's enough for it to be a constant thing in this country. Amen. So we don't want to act as if those things don't exist. They exist. However, um, I want to be very clear that I, this has brought me to a place where I've had I feel the need to address it. I feel like if I'm a pastor and. If I'm a pastor, I have to address the things that are hard to address. Amen. I have to address the things that are difficult to have a conversation about. I have to uh, be able to articulate the voice that is needs to be articulated. Now, I don't call myself the so-called voice of the voiceless. I don't I don't think that I deserve such a, a moniker, uh, but I do believe that it is my job to um respectfully convey it and and bring it back into the context of, of of truth and um if you are if you know me you know that i love my black people like if you know me if you've known me your whole life you know i don't play when it comes down to my people now you you may see me mad about it i may say things that i don't you may not agree with everything i say you may not like every word that falls out of my mouth and yes i have some conservative views some but I I don't by no stretch of the imagination uh, stop hating start hating my people you know as as an African American we got enough people in this world that don't like us I don't think it's our job to start hating us too Amen so I I just really am big about you know my people and I have to be honest about that uh, so for those who watch this video do understand that I do come from the 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 background of an African American man and and I can't stress enough that I can't put that away just because of what my congregation may even look like amen I have to still address these things because uh th it is what's going on today and I and Christians we can't hide our heads just because we don't like the topic or we may uh disagree even on the topic now God has given me something to kind of to, to eat on today. Thank, amen. We can kind of eat on today. And if you'll turn with me to the gospel corner to John chapter 2. The gospel of John chapter 2. And we're going to look at. We're going to look at verse 13 and we're going to read from there down to verse 25. Amen. 13 through 25. That is uh, John 2. And that's chapter 13, I mean, John chapter 2, and that's verse 13. And it reads, the Passover of the Jews was near. And Jesus was went up to Jerusalem, and he found the temple, those who were selling oxen, sheep, doves, and many uh, changers seated at their tables. So those like, I guess you can kind of say they're like uh, cashiers. And... To those who were selling the doves, he said, take these things away. Stop making my father's house a place of business. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for, his, for your house will, be cons will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what signs do you show us as your authority for doing these things? Jesus answers them and says, destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up. Jesus then said, 
it said it took 40 i'm sorry then the jews then said excuse me not jesus but the jews uh it took 46 years to build this temple and you will raise it up in three days but he speaking of the temple of his body so when uh so when uh he was raised from the dead his disciples remembered that he said this and they believed the scripture and the word which jesus had spoken now when he was in jerusalem at the passover during the feast many believed in his name observing his signs which was he which he was doing but jesus on his part was not entrusting himself to them for he knew all men and because he did not need anyone to testify concerning man for he himself knew what was in man and then i want to i want to go to also matthews amen we're going to look at matthews chapter 2 i'm sorry matthews chapter 21 verse 12 through 17 it's the same situation okay here we are at the at the temple okay and Jesus enters the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he, over, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seat of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall not shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Okay, and you made it a den of robbers. Jesus came in and he overturned the tables. One in one situation, in both situations, Christ shows a layer of anger. Amen. He is absolutely infuriated. Here he is. He's coming into the church. He's coming into the temple and he's looking around and immediately he sees people uh, selling things for Passover, not giving it away, not allowing people to have it. He there's they're selling stuff. So here he is. He sees these cashiers there and and he tips over the tables. And I bring this scripture to you because many times when we are looking in situations that we are in right now, we, we tend to think that what would Jesus do in this situation? Would Jesus show uh, and we tell people, be Christ like, be Christ like, be Christ like uh, that there is no such thing as a righteous anger. Amen. Like there's no such thing as someone being upset for the right reasons. And there's no such thing as a physical response for your righteous anger. Amen. There is absolutely a time for you to be angry when you come into a situation. Here is a moment where Jesus is in a situation that is beyond something that he could imagine here is a situation where he's coming in and people are robbing the the uh, people around him that's why the bible says be you angry and sin not that there is a point where you can show a physical response there's three things you will know that when when you're in righteous anger one is 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 that you have a proper physical response one jesus did not just turn over the tables but he strategically came in it was on a day when he's walking in on what a passover celebrating a holiday not bothering anybody walks in the door and what's the first thing he sees all the things that he had seen before now i, I often wonder how many times had christ seen the the temple being used for 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 commerce i often wonder how many times did jesus walk in and see somebody you know just just selling the ox to someone else uh i wonder how many times he saw that cashier's table 
and saw the amount of money that was being bartered but was never given to someone that was lame or someone that was in need or anything like that. But they took the money and basically did whatever they want with it. I wonder how many times did Jesus see these things? You have to ask yourself that question because if you if you think about it, then you will understand why Jesus was mad. This is not the first time he had to see this. This had to be many times over many years, over his lifetime. Think about it. He's been going back and forth between, to Passovers for at least a, a good 12 years of 20 years of his life. This is Jesus, in, you know, in the, in the height of his ministry. So he's got to be about 30 years old, 29, 30 years old. So think about it like this. He's at the he started to get into his ministry. He's starting to do the things he's doing. And here we are. We're at the temple. How many years have he been seeing this? How many times have he preached that this is wrong? How many times did he not say like, hey, I wonder why they don't just do what they're supposed to do? And then you see where it's written. He's re- he's, he knows the word because he is the word. He knows the hearts and he knows what's in them. He knows what they're trying to do. He knows and he, and, and he hears what, they're go- what they have going on. And he can see all of the, the, the different ideas that they are investing in. Amen. And, and, and he knows that their hearts are not pure. And even though he knows that their hearts aren't pure. Notice that Jesus for a long time basically does nothing. But this one day, it was the last straw. He couldn't take it anymore. He got tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. He got tired of seeing them making his dinner a uh, 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 thing. When you look at the African-American situation, you have to understand that these young people, not just the young but the old, have been watching for decades and decades and decades and decades and decades of people doing wrong by African-Americans. They've been watching for decades, watching Watching people mistreat the African American community, we have watched as the the you know you gotta think about it. Our grandmothers and grandfathers had to watch Reconstruction and the Jim Crow, and then the Civil Rights era, and then you know you had to go through the seventies and, and 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 desegregation and all those things, and then coming to come into to the days market where you still can't walk down certain streets, you still can't live in certain neighborhoods, you still can't go to certain places, you still can't be where you want to be without being bothered you can't go in the store without being followed by somebody and asking you you know you or do you need something they bypass all the white people but come directly to you to ask you if you need something but it's not really because you need something you are not the ones that have to listen to the cold go across the pa when you walk in the door Can't get certain housing because your credit is is looking a certain way. But in a certain neighborhood, they won't even get. You can look at and you'll find that some white men will even get because of where they come from and what zip code they come from. All of a sudden, they're able to get one. But you go down down the street and the same person with the same uh, 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 credit score could be. What a six twenty. What is it? Uh, six fifty. Both of them have a six fifty. One has low interest. One has high interest. And you're seeing all of these things over and over and over and over and over again. And then you have no choice but to ask the question, how much more do I have to take? You are, Jesus says, you are making my home a den of thieves. A place where that's supposed to be giving to the poor. You're making it a den of things. And in the in the case of the African American, you keep killing us. Yes, us. The more we hit, no, you can't look at it and go, well, they didn't kill you. Ha ha ha. No, you are killing people over and over and over again. And you can say, well, maybe if you would do this, well, then everything will be all right. And then you wonder why somebody walks in and tips over the table. Jesus didn't walk in and just start having a nice conversation. Jesus came in and started tipping over tables. He he messed up the money. And then went to the scribes and told them, if you, if, if, if you would tear down this temple, we'll build it back up in three days.
Jesus was righteously angry. Jesus had a righteous anger. He had the right to be mad, and it had a physical response. But here's the other part of it. Jesus didn't just have a righteous anger and just burn down everything. Notice that Jesus didn't come in and destroy the temple. Amen. He didn't destroy the parts of the temple. He didn't destroy the inner parts of the temple. He didn't destroy the, the upper room. He didn't destroy the place where the offerings were supposed to be given. He did not destroy the places for worship. He did not do any of those things. He went and destroyed the things that was destroying his home. He tore down the foundations of the things that was being destroyed, and he brought back the truth into the room because he brought back the word. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that as much as you have, as much as you are required, if you are sitting here and telling me that it is okay for you to destroy yourselves based upon the fact that you're just angry, that is unrighteous anger. Amen. You are doing more damage to yourself than you are to the things that you're trying to change. Amen. You're supposed to put forth your, your anger into the right place. Now, notice I didn't say that you can't have a physical response. I didn't say that. In fact, that's how it happens. You, 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 you protest something, you, you end up having a physical response based upon the, the context of what you're protesting. Uh, I, I always look at it like this. Uh, if you go to, uh, if you're protesting uh, the color of a banner, y'all don't like it. That's not going to have a physical response. That's going to be everybody walks down there with their picket signs. The governor hears it. He makes the change. Who cares? Um, y'all don't y'all uh, protest and pro life or even pro choice. Uh, you you know somebody might get arrested for being inebriated, but nine times out of ten, nothing's going to happen. You know because it's a peaceful rally. It's 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 really a rallying cry for an issue that's very nuanced and no everyone knows it's not going to get solved in a day. And it's, 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 it's still just pro-life or pro-choice. It is what it is. You're, you, you know what the answer is going to be. Nobody's going to get harmed. But when you're talking about the person, you know, robbing, taking away somebody, talking about taking something away, murder, things like that, that requires a little more action. See, when you're talking about somebody uh hurting somebody, I don't, you know, that's 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 a different horse. That's a horse of a different color as they would say. So, when you look at it from that respect, amen, you have to look at it uh with an idea that these things can happen. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Y'all y'all ain't listening. And I know I'm on I'm in here by myself. I know I'm preaching to the angels right now, but that's okay. I'll preach to the angels. It's one of those things where we can't lie and say to ourselves that these things don't have a physical reaction. Amen. We can't say that these things won't have some type of uh, 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 backlash. Amen. So uh, when you walk into the situation and you walk into uh, these things, you need to be able to speak clearly. Amen. And articulate what you're trying to prove. Um, burning down uh, an area does your resources is not speaking clearly. Uh, it, it, it burning down the things that you need, your markets and your stores and your jobs and your 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 your, your devices to the neighborhood uh, that. That's not helpful. That doesn't help to build up the neighborhood. That doesn't give you what you're looking for. Uh, that doesn't help you to do it. Now you can uh, look at it and go, okay, well, yeah, well, we're mad. Yes. You tipped over some tables. Yes. You 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 went after a couple police precincts. Okay. 
you know, but now you're, you're stopping that. But then you go and you destroy things or you allow those who are evil to render evil, which means you saw them about to do wrong. You didn't try to stop the wrong. In fact, you helped with the wrong because you were saying, OK, notice that Jesus didn't say, hey, disciples, loot the area, grab their money, take all of their stuff because they took our stuff. They're making my house a den of these. Well, let's do them, too. He didn't say that. He didn't say render evil for evil. He didn't say, you know, those things. He came in, he tipped over to what was the issue. He put it into context and he did, he went after what was the issue. Not, come on somebody, I'm not, I'm not by myself. So when we go and we do harm to somebody, and we go and we, we do those things, we have an unrighteous Anger and unrighteous anger will breed you zero. You will get nothing done. You will have no win at the end of the day. You will lose out on all that you could have had. You can have you would have had you will burn yourself out and never get done anything. It will yield you nothing but ash and destruction. That's what unrighteous anger does. But a righteous anger will have you in front of the scribes, telling them the truth, bringing them the honest truth. And whether they like it or not, they're going to make the change. Jesus did that and on Calvary's mountain. He finished every last bit of it. They tore him down and he built it back up in three days. He had a purpose. He had a reason. And he, and he fulfilled it based upon the truth. Not based upon anger. Not based upon rage. But real, honest, loving God truth. That's what we stand for. That's what we work for. And that's what the church is supposed to be about. We can't shun it away. We can't drive it away. We can't put it away. We can't hide it under the table. We can't, we can't make ourselves feel good in a moment. Everybody trying to make themselves feel good, but nobody trying to make the hard work of having to say what it is that we really need. We can't let the devil come into our neighborhood and start running roughshod in our neighborhood. We can't let the devil come into our neighborhood and start looting our neighborhoods and burning down our businesses because that's what was happening. We can't let the devils come into our neighborhood and start destroying our stuff because that's what was happening. Most of those people that was uh, robbing and looting, they didn't tell you that a lot of those were white people. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Let me let me back on out of that that conversation. Let me go back to the to being just regular Reverend Glass. Let me not go into the conversation of of what 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 was really happening. Let's not go into looking at some of those videos. We ain't gonna look at the videos that showed the black men who were uh, saving one police officer. We don't talk about that young those five young men. But uh, let, let me just go ahead and call, cut off that conversation, too, because I don't want to offend nobody. But uh, we have to have righteous anger. Righteous anger, uh, it, it, it brings forth change. Righteous anger doesn't stop you from having a physical response. Amen. Those things are going to happen. And I don't want to belabor the point much more. Uh, I want to let you know that as much as we are given, as much as we are required. And I pray that during this time that we will have these moments where we will come to the truth of the gospel. And not only that, but make the decision to do what is right. And the proper changes will need that need to be had. Amen. The proper changes that we should do as a community will happen and that we would not have to keep dealing with these things every single Sunday morning. Amen. That one day uh, the wicked will cease from trouble and the weary will be at rest. Amen. And we won't be sitting around angry with and frustrated about race. In this country anymore. Because that is not. And will not. Be good. For anybody. 
Amen. So that is this Sunday morning's uh, conversation. I thank you for taking the time to come out. If you will bow your head and close your eyes with me, we can pray and we'll and I'll let you go for the day. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to uh, just dive into your word today. Lord, I hope that what I have said has helped somebody. Lord, we we ask that first you are creating us a clean heart. Lord, that you renew the right spirit within us. Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Father, help us to be uh, respectful. Lord, help us to love one another. Lord, I ask that you, first off, Lord, heal our land. Of all the anger, Lord, of all the anger. Anger is is righteous, Lord. Right. Anger is okay, Lord. Uh, the proper anger is always okay, Lord. But, Lord, help us to understand and manage our anger and challenge it in the right direction, Lord, that we be able to do what is right, what is good, and what is the perfect will of you, Lord, that you can help us to uh, or uh, to walk circumspectly in the world, be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagement as exemplary in our deportment. Lord, we ask that you help us to just uh, bring someone closer to you, Lord. Bring you, cl- bring them closer to, uh, uh, or Lord, even better, Lord, let them come yelling, yelling, what must I do to be saved? Father, we love you with all, all our heart, soul, and strength. Lord, we love you from the bottom, from the, from our depths of our hearts to the the bottom of our soul or let it just let us just be fair to one another let us be kind to one another and let us do the things that are you will find to be acceptable in your sight in jesus name we pray take care of the families who are in need take care of those who are like going through a lot with the covid19 and lord those who are just angry lord and just have done some things that maybe they they regret today. Lord, just wrap your arms around them. Lord, let them know that you don't, you ain't never left them. You'll never leave nor forsake. That you will love them even until the end. Lord, that you will be with them even until the end. Even even in all their decisions. Lord, even if they make their beds in hell. Lord, you are still with them. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, I just want to encourage all of you to uh, follow Christ in every way that you can and go with God. And just because someone may say you're wrong for feeling a certain type of way, you're not wrong. You have the right to your feelings. You have the right to be angry and you have a right to do it in a way that's going to bring forth the proper change. And not just a whole lot of dust. I'm mean, the big Asuchia. Pass the glass. And I'm out.